boys and girls, this is Miss Lisa, and I go to Artemis Christian Church. And I know some of you may have been having to miss church the last few weeks. Maybe you've not been feeling well, or you've had to stay home because we're all having to social distance because of this scary word that keeps going around. But I wanted to just get with you, check on you, see how you're doing, and also bring you a lesson so you don't have to miss church. The last few weeks at our church on Wednesday nights, we have been studying Psalm 23. If you want to get your Bibles out or you want to get your phone out and turn there, that's Psalm 23. The last couple weeks we've learned verse 1, 2, and 3. And today we're going to learn verse 4. If you haven't learned, that's okay. I'm going to catch you up today in a real quick review. Today is, like I said, the fourth verse. Now, in our first verses, we learn that God is our shepherd. He provides all we need, and what we learned the last time we met is how he always leads us down the right path. Aren't you glad God is our shepherd? I'm very happy about that. Now lately, there's not a whole lot of good things that you hear in the news. I know most of y'all don't read a paper newspaper, but you see things online, you see it on the television. There's that scary word we keep hearing, coronavirus. We see crime, we see people fighting, we see all the political stuff going on. Now the value of money keeps going down and there's more and more pressure in our lives to succeed. In short, it's quite dark days where people are full of fear and worry. And some of you all may be scared right now. Full of fear, full of worry. Your parents may be going through some worry or scared times right now. More and more people have, are feeling negative. They're scared. They have nothing or no one who can really comfort them and make them feel strong again. Have you ever had times where you felt scared or worried about problems? Maybe you had a bad day at school, a test you didn't do well on. Maybe a parent got sick or maybe there's some things going on at your home. Or you're having to stay home and work on those packets for school. Well, it's okay sometimes to feel scared. We've all had those times, all of us. But unlike all the people in the world who have no hope, we are Christians and children of God. And God has told us who he is. And in the Psalms we've been studying, we have learned he is our shepherd. And you children who have been in class with us, you know he is our good shepherd. As our shepherd, he has promised to help us with those fears. We're going to look at those promises as we look at our next verse in Psalm 23. But before we go on to verse 4, we're going to read the first three verses and talk about them real quick. It says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Ah, oh, God provides everything we need. Miss Lisa really, really needs a giant speedboat so she can race really fast on the water. Right? No? No, I don't. But I need that speedboat, God, so I can go catch fish and feed my family. What is that? Oh, I know what you're thinking, boys and girls. If I have a little John boat, I could still go out and catch fish for my family. You're right. I don't need a big speedboat. But Miss Lisa really needs a Lamborghini so I can get to church really fast. What is that, boys and girls, you're thinking? I don't need a Lamborghini. Oh, I could get to church on a bicycle. You're right. So God, he provides what we need. doesn't always give us everything we want because what things that we want might be what we don't need. But guys, don't have to worry about where you're going to live or what you're going to eat because God will always provide that for you. So the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside still waters. We have a shepherd who will calm us and lead us and guide us. He restores my soul. He guides me along the path of righteousness for his namesake. 
righteousness, the right path. God will always lead us down the right path. He's never going to lead us the wrong way. And today's verse, and I'm going to read today's verse from the NIV Bible. I like how it is worded. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Set first part, even though I walk through the darkest valley, a dark valley for some of you boys and girls may be, you're, you're not doing very well in math class. And it scares you because you want to go to the next grade and maybe you're getting a little worried that your teacher might not let you move on to the next grade next year because you're not doing well in math. That could be your dark valley. Maybe your brother or sister is getting ready to graduate high school and they're going to be leaving home in the fall and going to another school called college. Wow. It could be far away and they're not going to see you every single day. And you might be getting a little worried and that might be your dark valley. Maybe a parent is sick or maybe your grandparents are not feeling well. Maybe you're worried about what people might get sick and things that's going to be happening. It doesn't have to be something terrible. It can be as simple as you've lost your best friend because they're taught, they talked about you and they're hanging out with someone else and you're feeling lonely. That can be a dark valley. Guys, we've all experienced a dark valley. <clears throat> says, I will fear no evil. Wow, we don't have to be scared of all those things in our dark valleys. You know, we don't have to be afraid of being lonely. We don't have to be afraid that we're scared and worried about things happening in our family. For your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, a shepherd carries a staff. And do you know what a staff is? We had somebody in church and I said it described it as like a candy cane shape, but it's big. You know, it's got the little crook on it. I can't do it very well. That's a staff. But do you know why a shepherd carries a staff? They protect their sheep. Wow. That little crook, if a sheep tries to run off, they can just grab that sheep around the neck and pull it back. Or let's say a bear or a wolf or a mean dog comes up and they're getting ready to attack the sheep, the shepherd can run up and they can take that step and bang that villain on the head, whatever it is, and they can, that thing will run off or hurt it and protect the sheep. And it brings comfort to all the other sheep knowing when that shepherd's standing there with that staff that they know their shepherd is there and exactly how God protects and comforts us from bad things. Well, don't, you don't have to worry, and we don't have to be scared. Why? Because God is our good shepherd. Very good. So, boys and girls, verse 4 gives us a great promise. Even when we are in those dark, lonely moments where we're scared or frustrated or crying, God is there. He's not just sitting there watching, but He is close. He is guarding you from harm, and He's guiding you so that you can get out. Isn't God so good to us? He really is our shepherd, and because there is nothing we will ever lack, we should shout a big thank you to God, our shepherd. We're going to talk today about a man named Elijah. He was overwhelmed with fear. He was running away. He was lonely and deep in despair. And I want this to be an example to us that fear and discouragement are weapons of note and have the ability to destroy us. The example of Elijah is to be referred to, we're going to refer to it throughout our lesson. Okay, boys and girls? And this comes from 1 Kings chapter 19. And I'm not going to read it word for word. I'm going to summarize because it's kind of long. But first, if you want to 
do this along with me, I have a little object lesson. So if you want to get a rock, I've got a washcloth, you can get a dry little towel or something, and some water. You can get a bowl or a plate, and you can try this little thing at home where you can pause right now and go get those. Okay, boys and girls, if you got your rock and a cloth, a cup of water and a bowl, we'll get started. How would you describe this rock? Hard. That's the first thing that comes to my mind is it's a hard rock. Now place the rock in your bowl and let's pour some water over it. What happens to that water when we pour it on there? It just ran right off because the rock is hard. Can the rock soak up the water? No, the water rolls right off the hard surface. Now, pour some water on your cloth. What happens when we pour water on the cloth? It soaks it all in. The towel soaks up the water. The soft towel or washcloth in this case was ready to absorb the water. Now we're going to listen from our story Queen Jezebel. The reaction to what God had done on Mount Carmel. And I want you to try to decide if her heart was hot hard like the rock or soft like the washcloth. On top of Mount Carmel, God sent fire to burn up a soaking wet sacrifice in the altar on which it was placed. God proved to everyone in Israel that he was the one true living God. All these people, they believed in another God called Baal and all these gods and they were not real gods. They were false. They were fake. But people, they were watching, they fell to their knees and they praised the real God, the God that we worship. Well, Jezebel wasn't there when all this happened, but her husband, King Ahab, told her everything. He told her that Baal could do nothing, but God sent a mighty blast of fire. The truth was clear. Baal was a worthless, false God. But Elijah's God, our God, was all powerful. So the Bible tells us in 1 Kings 19 verse 2, Jezebel sent a message to Elijah. She said, you can be sure I will kill you by this time tomorrow. Well, hmm, that's kind of a scary thing to be told, isn't it? That somebody's going to kill you. Why did she do that? She refused to believe the truth. She spent so many years believing in her made-up God that she would not admit it was false. Her heart had become hard like our rock, and she would not accept the truth about God. For over three years, God had protected and provided for Elijah. There had been a big drought, and he always took care of him. God used Elijah to perform amazing miracles. He had raised a little boy from the dead and sending fire to the altar. Yet when Jezebel threatened to kill Elijah, he had a very surprising reaction. We learn finishing in verse 2, it says, Elijah was afraid, so he ran for his life. Elijah doubted God would protect him. And sometimes we might feel that way too during our scary times. Elijah was focused on the evil Jezebel instead of the all-powerful God. And sometimes, boys and girls, we get focused on the scary things we hear in the news, the friends who are gossiping about us, the math grade we're, we're, we're scared about, and maybe we want to go ask our teachers for help or get, us, help, get our parents and say, Mom, Dad, can you help me? Sometimes we just get focused on all the negative and all the scary, and we don't think about God. This is, you know, it's kind of like looking at this beautiful rose bush, but instead of seeing the roses, 
All we see are the thorns. Elijah ran as far as his legs could carry him. Now, I don't know about some of you, but I don't know any of y'all could run 100 miles. But that's how far Elijah ran, 100 miles away from Jezebel. He fled out of fear. Not because God told him to run. Elijah should have realized that there is no problem too big for God. Not even Queen Jezebel. At times, many of us are guilty of doing what Elijah did. We get scared and instead of trusting God to help us and using the resources God has given us like maybe our brains, maybe our parents, our teachers, our being able to pray and ask God to comfort us, we might run, we might hide, we might just stay in our rooms, we might kind of sulk, we have a pity party. During our times of trouble, we need to fix our minds on Jesus. Do you like to play hide and go seek? I love a good game of hide and go seek. But what if you played with somebody who every single time you played knew exactly where you were hiding? That would not be very fun, would it? God always knows where we are. <clears throat> Nowhere that you can go that God can't find you or see you. When Elijah ran away from Jezebel, he certainly did not run away from the Lord. Elijah wandered deep into the desert. Sad and discouraged, Elijah told God, I've had enough. I've had enough. So he sat down beneath the tree and fell asleep. I'm sure he was very tired from running for a hundred miles and needed a nap. He was probably super hungry because there was no McDonald's on the way. Suddenly, an angel touched Elijah. God sent an angel to prepare a much needed meal for him. The angel woke Elijah, gave him fresh bread and water. The angel took care of Elijah and it would seem he told Elijah where to go next. You know, the next time you play a game of hide and go seek, remember that God always knows where you are. He wants to comfort and encourage you to depend on him, just like God sent the angel to help Elijah in his time of need. But that didn't make Elijah very happy. He wasn't satisfied. He still didn't turn back to God and trust him. So he walked for 40 days and nights until he came to Mount Horeb. And this is the exact same mountain where Moses saw the burning bush. Here the Lord said, Elijah, what are you doing here? Well, this was God's way of making Elijah think about why he'd ran away. The Lord said, go out, stand on the mountain in front of me, and I'm going to pass by. As the Lord approached, a very powerful wind tore the mountains apart. It broke up the rocks but the Lord wasn't in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire came, but the Lord wasn't in the fire. And this is verses 11 and 12, we're on. God displayed his power right in front of Elijah to give Elijah the opportunity to put his focus right back on God instead of on himself. It was as if God was saying, if I can split a mountain and cause an earthquake at my whim, do you really need to worry about one woman who wants to kill you? Then God's gentle voice whispered once again, Elisha, what are you doing here? But sadly, Elijah did not set his focus back on God. Very sadly, his heart had become hard just like Jezebel's, just like our rock. Boys and girls, let Elijah be a lesson to you. Don't let your heart get hard when things don't go your way, when you're scared, when there's times of fear. Trust in God. Hi, boys and girls. Do you all remember Barney? He's came all the way from Bethlehem just to help us out today. Hey Barney, how are you today? Have you seen your good shepherd lately? <coughs> yes, Barney has. Well, they were almost 
almost done with our lesson today. And I wanted to share one more thing, and Barney's going to help us out. Boys and girls, we all have fears and worries. We go through times of darkness just like Elijah went through. Those times where you feel all alone because no one understands you and, un and everyone's on your case all the time. Maybe someone frightens you. Or maybe just the pressure of life tries you and it seems too much. Fear and worry are very powerful weapons that Satan uses. Let's illustrate how this works. Let's pretend that Barney is affected by a fear situation. He's very scared. He's trembling with fear. Maybe a bear or something's been chasing him. You know, he can cope with fear, but if the fear isn't dealt with and is allowed to remain, everything builds up and fear becomes more powerful. It's not so easy to cope with the fear now the more worries and fears continue in your life, the more difficult it is to cope. This is where loneliness and pressure starts to build and your fear becomes a prison around you. and You can't escape, just like Barney is surrounded and he can't escape. This is a horrible place to be because the devil torments you in prison. Praise God that he doesn't want us to stay trapped in this prison. He doesn't want us to be tormented by the devil. No. The Lord is our shepherd. He guides us in getting us out of the prison of fear and loneliness. How, we may ask? Well, there's two things we want to learn about today which God has given us. God's promises. These are not just nice-sounding verses. The promises are powerful weapons because they are promises that the true God has made to us. And we all know that He doesn't lie. As we pray using verses from the Bible, faith is released into our hearts. So when we are feeling scared and lonely, what do we do? Remember what God has promised you. Like in our verse today, can you remember it boys and girls? Even though I walk through the deepest, see, it says the darkest valley. That was our verse. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. Why? Because we know that God, our good shepherd, is guiding and guarding us all the way. Remember what God has promised. Pray that promise for your life. And then start to praise and thank God for his true promise to help you. God's presence. When we start to praise and thank God for his goodness and promises, this releases trust in our hearts. Our shepherd promised that he would be very close to us and his presence surrounds us. His peace and comfort come into your life. Look, when we do those things, just like Barney is out of prison. We can't always stop these things that make us afraid, but we can stop the fear from imprisoning us. There will always be things that make us worry, but worry and fear doesn't have to bully us. Why? Because the Lord is your shepherd and his promises and presence will protect you and set you free. Boys and girls, those are some great promises that our Good Shepherd, God, has made. Well, boys and girls, stay tuned. I'd like to be back here in a couple days with another lesson. That way we can learn more about God. Let's pray before we go. Lord, thank you for each boy and girl today. Lord, help them not be afraid and full of fear and to remember the promises that you have made in your word. Lord, protect us, watch over us, and help us, Lord, and comfort us. And thank you for your son, Jesus, who died for us. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Bye-bye, boys and girls, and until next time. <coughs>